Hello, it's Jeremy James here. Um, this is a video um, that entitled The Holy Spirit versus the Kundalini Spirit, basically the prayer. And these are the images and, and what is um, basically the image of the Holy Spirit, which you know in church that it always, the, this is the image of the Holy Spirit. They always show in Ezekiel, um, or the spirit of the dove. Uh, however, I'm going to show you the Kundalini, what the Kundalini spirit, what their symbolicism is, is this. This is the Kundalini spirit, serpent power. And it tells more, and it tells you, um, and this, this is also relates to the Kundalini spirit. This is the chakra, you probably heard of this, and this is the, so, you know, basically what's around the chakra. That's, that's the Kundalini, and the, and the chakra goes up through the back. And it quarrels into a snake, but this is the position. This gives. This is a sign how you meditate in yoga, but this is um, this is part of the chakra. This is and believe it or not, Krishna's, you know, meditate on yoga, which is separate, because if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be really messing with yoga, because it's two different spirits. And it, again, this is, this is Kundalini Yoga, false, holy, and it's the teaching on that. And, um, again, this is, this symbolicism of, would be of the Holy Spirit, is the dove, the spirit of the dove. So I give that. The power of the Holy Spirit is the dove, always the dove. The Kundalini Spirit is always connected to, to this. So whenever you do yoga, people, you know, Christians do yoga or something like that, you you are in, you you have the conflict in the spirit realm. There's a conflict between the two spirits because the, the main spirit which is of Christ which is the Holy Spirit is supposed to govern the spirit but if you do yoga whatever that's another spirit which is when you do this and see this see this right here what they call meditation this is a, it, it curls like a snake that's a spirit that curls like from the base of your spine to the top of your head. So all the people who do yoga, who who don't know about this, basically you in in the spirit realm, this is happening to your spine. And it's sun worship. All these different positions are sun worship. And the poses that go back to ancient times. These are, the, and everybody, and it, unfortunately, there's churches are getting to this. Strengthen your aura or your kundalini. That's the spirit around it. The Holy Spirit has nothing, the spirit of Christ has nothing to do with this spirit. It's the enemy of God that takes over. And what this spirit does, it mimics Christ, it mimics the Holy Spirit when this, um, certain ways that in, in it's in his trickery is to get into church and try to be people think that it is of God and that's why it's good to allow the spirit of God to let you know what's moving in him and you would know by the scriptures and, and it's a, the, a lot of this is infiltrating into the church and this is dangerous this is dangerous Spiritually is dangerous.
you see all these different symbolicisms and just in animal positions, different positions, and it doing this. All this is connected to worship. All this is opening up yourself to something, paying homage to the gods of yoga. And people say, well, it's kind of help your blood pressure in me. God has his own way. If you're a Christian, he has his own way for you to exercise. He would never okay this because it conflicts with him in the spirit realm. But this is it right here. And I think I have a story where a man, I might put this, hold on, show you a couple more of these. These are the, these are the yoke, these are the gods of what you see in the open India. The, you know, all the, these, all the different deities that do, do yoga. This is a separate God, it has no, it has no, no dealings with Christ. It has, these gods have no dealing with Jesus, no dealing with Christ. He wouldn't. Jesus was caught doing these things. He did when he was walking the earth. He's probably been in India. He would never anticipate with something like that. These positions, and I know some people are going to be offended who see his video, but this is, this is the truth. The, 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 the handalism, the hand, t the, this, the statues all are all connected. You are giving you are giving honor to this these things. So you're giving honor to a fallen spirit. And so if you if you are a Christian, I would suggest you do not do this do these exercises. There's there there's different ways to stretch out and exercise and meditate. But this is not it, because this, this is connected. Go back deep ancient roots into it. It goes back really deep. And I heard a man's testimony, um, consult, consulting this. And he, he said, uh, and I don't know if he was in the yoga, but he said he had a spirit of the Kundalini spirit. And he was having problems. And what the Kundalini spirit was doing is making, making with laughter and gesture and locking noises and things, and uh, which which is was not of the Holy Spirit, but this spirit of Kundalini is trying to mimic itself to make people think that it is. And some pastors have wel welcome it, it, it unknowingly. That's why you need a man of God to kind of. Allow God to bring revelation to it. This, and, and God will let you know when His Spirit is moving. But it, it's not in agreement with this. And it don't share no glory because the Bible said He shares no glory. And, and, and it's not another deity to have. This is, you know, this is not deity, it's not up in heaven. This, these deities like this, they're not in heaven. No offense to anybody, but this this a deity like this won't be in heaven. But it, it, it it's symbolicism. And, uh, uh, but I just want it's you know the duty is to warn people is that hopefully someone will hear this video and they will take heed to this. Um, I know doctors say, well, that, that's part of it. They bring it to people. It's been said that it brings your blood pressure down. It helps as you relax. But God has certain ways for you to exercise and relax. And he definitely do not want you anticipating. Trust me. If you don't believe me, get in, get in your Bible, get in prayer, and seek him. He will tell you himself. And ask him about this, what I'm telling you. Ask the Lord Himself; He would definitely tell you. And he and, and wait on for His answer. 
he will tell you himself what he what is of him and what goes against him and what is the meaning behind it. I'm gonna stop right there. Hello, James here. Came back to this video. I want to show you. I'm having this the audio, but I can't show you the video because it's kind of linked to YouTube. But I'm going to hear this man's audio, and um, and let him explain what between the Holy Spirit and the Kundalini Spirit. Here it is. Spirit and the differences between that and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to lay the groundwork a little bit. I was saved in 2008, so between that time and my actual baptism of the Holy Spirit, it spanned about seven years. But in between that time, I was experiencing counterfeit spirits. Now, a lot of people in the Christian community call it a kundalini spirit, which uh, stems from Hinduism. Um, they believe that the kundalini spirit is this coiled-up snake type of spirit. Now, it's not named in the Bible. It's only been given that name within the Christian community through this. So don't try to look it up. It, uh, the, only, the closest thing that would come to it would be a spirit of error, um, and spirit of Antichrist. When I first experienced it, I thought it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I truly did. But I had no frame of reference. Um, what would happen to me is that I would go into laughter. Now, this is where the whole thing that you might have heard of is holy laughter. That is not the Holy Spirit because I experienced that. Along with laughter, I got into locked positions. Now, what I mean by that is that for me, how that manifested is that my head would tip back. I would drop my jaw to the point of dislocation, and my head would be locked. And I would be like in this perpetual, uncontrollable laughter. I would be in that. But I had no frame of reference, and I heard a lot of Christians talking about that holy laughter was the, you know, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so I thought that's what that was. It wasn't until later on that I started seeing the other side of the Christian owl saying that this is not what it is. It is a counterfeit spirit, and it is very prevalent in the churches today. Well, so what happened was, is that I was saved, so I was under authority... You look at Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. I had been saved, so I was under authority. So I, I told that thing to go away. Whatever it was, I didn't believe that you were who I thought you were, this kundalini spirit. Let's just call it that for the sake of this video. So I told it to go away. It never came back. Um, much later on, I did get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't experienced the true baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are not going to understand because we are both coming from a different point of reference, a different experience um, with regard to this. On the outside, it can look the same. You know, counterfeits look a lot like the original. You see people who have a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They have joy and they have all of this stuff that's going on. And it could look like uncontrollable laughter. It can look like speaking in tongues and a lot of manifestations therein. But I'm here to tell you, as one who has experienced this Kundalini Spirit firsthand, as one who has experienced and is experiencing the Holy Spirit, they are two Completely different things. So we're going to go into what the differences are. The Kundalini spirit, with me and with others, there is uncontrolled laughter. It is based upon sensuality, 
or the experience of the laughter. 